Suppose a Cobb-Douglas production function is given by P of L comma K. The cost function for a facility is given by C of L comma K. Suppose the monthly production goal of this facility is to produce 19,000 items. In this problem, we will assume L represents units of labor invested, K represents units of capital invested, and then we can invest in tenths of units for each of these. What allocation of labor and capital will minimize the total production cost, what is the minimum total production cost? We will solve this problem using the method of Lagrange multipliers. Let's first identify the constraint and also the function we want to minimize. The constraint is that the production must be 19,000 units, and because P of L comma K is the production function, the constraint is 11 times L raised to the power of 0.9 times k raised to the power of 0 0.1 must equal 19,000. We want to determine the minimum total cost and therefore we want to minimize the cost function c of l comma k. When using the method of Lagrange multipliers, if we want to minimize or maximize a function f of x comma y under the constraint g of x comma y, then we need to determine when the gradient of f is equal to lambda some constant times the gradient of g. This gives us the first two equations in this system of equations. And the last equation is determined by setting the constraint equal to zero. So going back to our problem, because the constraint is 11 times l raised to the power of 0 0.9 times k raised to the power of 0 0.1 equals 19,000, if we set this equation equal to zero, then g of l comma k is equal to 11 times L raised to the power of 0 0.9 times K raised to the power of 0 0.1 minus 19,000. So using the function G of L comma K and C of L comma K, let's set up the system of equations given by the method of Lagrange multipliers. Because we are minimizing the function C of L comma K, this first equation is going to be the partial of C with respect to L equals lambda times the partial of g with respect to l. The second equation is going to be the partial of c with respect to k equals lambda times the partial of g with respect to k. And then finally the last equation is going to be g of l comma k equals zero. And now let's determine the partial derivatives. We begin by determining the partial of c with respect to l by differentiating c with respect to l, treating k as a constant, and therefore the partial of c with respect to l is 200. So we have 200 equals lambda times the partial of g with respect to l. If we differentiate g with respect to l, we treat k as a constant. So we multiply 11 by 0 0.9, which gives us 9.9. .9. Then we have l raised to the power of 0 0.9 minus one, which is negative 0 0.1. We still have k raised to the power of positive 0 0.1. And the derivative of 19,000 with respect to L is zero. For the next equation, we have the partial of C with respect to k. If we differentiate C with respect to k, treating L as a constant, the partial derivative with respect to k is 400. So we have 400 equals lambda times the partial of G with respect to k. So now we're going to multiply 11 and 0 0.1, which gives us 1.1. Then we still have L raised to the power of 0 0.9. K raised to the power of 0 0.1 minus one, which is negative 0 0.9. And the derivative of 19,000 with respect to K is zero. The last equation, G of L comma K equals zero, gives us 11 times L raised to the power of 0 0.9 times k raised to the power of 0 0.1 minus 19,000 equals zero. And now we need to solve the system of equations. To do this, let's solve these first two equations for lambda. Solving this equation for lambda, we divide both sides of the equation by this quantity, which gives us lambda equals 200 divided by 9.9 .9 times L raised to the power of negative 0 0.1, K raised to the power of positive 0 0.1. Solving this equation for lambda, we have lambda equals 400 
divided by 1.1 times L raised to the power of 0 0.9 times K raised to the power of negative 0 0.9. Now that we have these two equations solved for lambda, we can set the right side of the equations equal to each other and then solve for L or K and then perform a substitution into the third equation to solve for L or K. Setting the right side of these two equations equal to each other or performing a substitution for lambda gives us the equation 200 divided by 9.9L .9 raised to the power of negative 0.1K raised to the power of 0.1 equals 400 divided by 1.1L raised to the power of 0.9 times K raised to the power of negative 0.9. Let's continue on the next slide. For the next step, let's rewrite both expressions using only positive exponents. On the left side of the equation, we can move L raised to the power of negative 0.1 to the numerator, which will change the sign of the exponent. And we can move K to the power of negative 0.9 up to the numerator to again change the sign of the exponent. This gives us 200 times L raised to the power of positive 0.1 divided by 9.9 .9 times k raised to the power of 0 0.1 equals, on the right side, 400 times k raised to the power of positive 0 0.9 divided by 1.1 times l raised to the power of 0 0.9. And now for the next step, because we have a proportion, let's cross multiply, which means this product must equal this product. And remember, when multiplying, and the bases are the same, we add exponents. So for this product, we have 200 times 1.1, which is 220. And then we have L to the 0 0.1. Then we have L raised to the power of 0 0.1 times L raised to the power of 0 0.9, which is L raised to the power of 0 0.1 plus 0 0.9, which is one. So we can leave the exponent off. And this is equal to, for this product, 9.9 .9 times 400 is 3,960. And then we have k to the 0 0.1 times k to the 0 0.9, which is k raised to the power of 0 0.1 plus 0 0.9, which gives us k to the first, or just k. And now let's solve this for L by dividing both sides by 220. Simplifying this quotient is one, one times L is L. We have L equals 3,960 divided by 220 is 18, we now know L is equal to 18K. Now that we know L is equal to 18K, we can go to the third equation of the constraint and perform a substitution for L and then solve for K. Let's do this on the next slide. So again, now that we know L is equal to 18K, we can substitute 18K for L and then solve the resulting equation for K. Performing the substitution, we have 11 times L, which is 18K, raised to the power of 0 0.9 times k raised to the power of 0 0.1. Let's add 19,000 to both sides, which gives us equals positive 19,000. And now on the left side of the equation, we have 11 times 18 raised to the power of 0 0.9. And then we have k raised to the power of 0 0.9, which we multiply by k to the 0 0.1 power, which gives us k to the first, or just k equals 19,000. And now to solve for k, we divide both sides by 11 times 18 raised to the power of 0 0.9. Simplifying on the left, this quotient is equal to one. One times k is k. We have k is equal to this quotient, which is approximately 128.1196. We are asked to round to the tenths place value, and therefore we will use k is approximately 128.1. If we go back to the original problem, let's go ahead and record this. We now know k, the units of capital, is 128.1. And now let's determine the value of L. To determine the value of L, we'll go back to the constraint and now substitute 128.1196 for k and solve for L. Performing the substitution for k gives us 11 times L raised to the power of 0 0.9 times k, which is 
0.1196, raised to the power of 0 0.1. Again, let's add 19,000 to both sides, giving us equals 19,000. Let's isolate the variable L by dividing both sides of the equation by 11 times 128.1196, raised to the power of 0 0.1. Simplifying, this quotient is 1 and so is this, giving us L to the power of 0 0.9. But let's write that as L raised to the power of 9 tenths equals, on the right side, this quotient is approximately 1063.1618. And now to solve the equation for L, we will raise both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power of 9 tenths which is 10 ninths. Remember, when we have powers raised to powers, we multiply exponents. So on the left side, 9 tenths times 10 ninths is equal to 1, giving us L. We have L is approximately 1,063.1618 raised to the power of 10 ninths, which is approximately 2,306.1533. Running to the tenths place value, we will use L as approximately 2,306.2. Again, let's go ahead and record this. We now know L is equal to 2,306.2. These are the values of L and K that will minimize the total cost. To determine the minimum total cost, we need to determine the function value C of L comma K with this value of L and this value of K. C of 2306.2 comma, which gives us a total minimum cost of 200 times 2306.2 plus 400 times 128.1, which is equal to 512,480, and this would be dollars. Going back to the question one last time, let's record the total minimum cost. I hope you found this helpful.